All right, let's talk about North Korea right now. It remains defiant, insisting it will not abandon its nuclear ambitions and will continue to prepare for what it calls preemptive attacks with nuclear force. This comes amid efforts that Russia and China are supplying the rogue regime with oil in violation of U.N. sanctions. Here with me now, Jonathan Wachtel, former director of communications and spokesperson at the United States Mission to the United Nations. So here we are. Uh, on the beginning of 2018, and we still have not only is it in our rearview mirror, but it's in our forward view. North Korea, Kim Jong un, continuing to have that penchant for developing a nuclear armament to counter anything that the United States can do to stop them. What do we do? A couple of things we can do. One is we have to remain very vigilant. This could go into a really crazy situation very rapidly. We already saw earlier the craziness with Guam. You'll recall that, and tensions were really tense. Nothing really has changed except for North Korea has honed in you know, more of their work on the intercontinental ballistic missiles and perfecting it and trying to work out the war, warhead to put into those missiles. Now, see, Jonathan, when you tell me that, my, my instant thought goes to not to Kim Jong-un because we know he's crazy. <laughs> I hate to say that, but, but pretty much, and that's a terrible thing to say, but the world usually views him as being crazy. But then there's Russia and there's China not doing what they need to do in terms of their due diligence to make sure that North Korea is contained and that it doesn't get too squirrely on us to the point that we can't pull it back and keep something uh, from happening in terms of provocation to an all-out war, which would be disastrous, of course. So what do we do to Russia and China? One thing, you just mentioned an all-out war. Russia and China really don't want that to happen. That would be, but if they keep pushing the envelope. That understood, but they really don't want that to happen. That is why we've seen some coming around in terms of Beijing and Moscow, because they don't like to have a super heavily armed atomic power in North Korea right next to them. I mean, yes, they have a history of supporting North Korea militarily, economically, their neighboring countries. They have trade historically right across those borders, hundreds of miles of shared borders. It makes sense for them to be engaged with North Korea, but they don't want a conflict because if you have a conflict, then you have unforeseen consequences that will affect them. So do they want to give the United States and its Western allies a headache? They certainly are enjoying giving us a headache, no question in, in that regard, and they've enjoyed that for decades. It's been quite helpful for them to have the United States be a boogeyman uh, in North Korea and to have this adjutant irritant uh, for, for the United States. It's a costly irritant as well. We have troops stationed in the uh, demilitarized zone in, in Korea, and we have to remain vigilant because it really is an unpredictable regime in North Korea, and it's scary because they are a nuclear power. So what does Russia and China gain by making sure that North Korea remains a headache to us and a distraction to us in terms of moving forward with things that we want to do globally? Geopolitically, it's helpful for them because they have yet another tool in their box to be able to pressure the United States and put us at a, unease. Um, there's a level of irresponsibility here, obviously. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have this problem one could easily argue if Moscow and Beijing really clamped down and didn't do as as that report you reported a short time ago, uh, you know, providing fuel and other lifelines to the North Korean regime. So they 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 want this to be going on. The other thing that they gain from this is obviously trying to contain uh, geopolitical strength in the region itself. Yeah. South Korea is economically strong. It's a it's a competitor. Japan Indeed. is economically strong. Indeed. There are territorial disputes between Russia and Japan. China has issues historically with Japan. So there are various so things going on It sounds like a chess game here. going on, but historically, Kim Jong-un is looking at the likes of some other people, like Saddam Hussein, you were mentioning, Muammar Gaddafi, trying to follow the pattern that they had in terms of being belligerent and provocative in their actions. Wise move or an unwise move? <laughs> Well, look at those two people that you just mentioned, two dictators who managed to keep power through being boogeymen and strong and military might and, and threatening the world with this and that, and they didn't have nuclear deterrence. Both of those dictators are dead, and Kim Jong-un knows that if war breaks out, he is probably one of the first casualties. So 
having a nuclear deterrent is something that he understands in his calculus, trying to survive, trying to allow all his guys surrounding him and, and women uh, surrounding him, the government there, to survive. They have, a, you know, a, their own cottage industry going on in North Korea. Survival well is at the center of it. Yeah, well explained. Uh, look, I, I got to go. Uh, that was supposed to be the last answer, but I got to ask you real quickly about Iran. Is the president doing the right thing to, to, to uh, challenge Iran on these demonstrations that are taking place? To a degree. One of the things that the regime is going to be looking for is trying to blame the United States. If they have some sort of proof, although they can concoct something, obviously, but some sort of proof that the United States is behind these demonstrations, that this mm -hmm. isn't mm -hmm. something starting of its own grassroots mm -hmm. and discontentment in the country itself, and they can blame the West. It helps them. It helps the regime in terms of having an excuse to clamp down. It gives them some sort of argument. So, you know, nice, subtle reminders about the need for democratic reform in the country is important, but showing some sort of sign that the United States is going to immediately intervene will, will actually help so the regime. So we have to be measured. Okay, thanks. Jonathan Wattel, always good to have you. Pleasure. All right.